We're on? Okay. Good evening. I am David Assad, the Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River. It's 6 p.m. on Thursday, February 20th, 2020. We are meeting at one government center in the committee hearing room. This is a meeting of a local public body and as such is subject to the provisions of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 38, Section 20, commonly known as the Open Meeting Law. Pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 38, Section 20, Subsection F, I hereby notify all persons in attendance that this meeting is being recorded with both video and audio devices. Our recording secretary this evening is Brittany Faria, the lady to my left. She's recording an audio version in Fall River Government TV. Alex Mello is recording both the video and audio version. If anyone desires to make an audio, video, or combination recording thereof, please notify me now and I shall make a public announcement of your intention. Present this evening are permanent members from my left to right, John Frank III, James Calkins, Attorney Carolyn Morissette, Vice Chair, and Dan Dupere. Uh, we currently have no alternate members, but expect Mayor Coogan to fill these positions. The gentleman to my immediate right is William Roth, Director of Planning for the City of Fall River. Brittany, have all petitions to be considered been properly advertised? and all interested parties notified in accordance with the rules and regulations of the Zoning Board of Appeals in Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A is amended. Yes. <clears throat> I declare the February 20th, 2020 regularly scheduled meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals of the City of Fall River open for such business as shall regularly come before it. I remind all persons presenting before the board, including the petitioners, abutters, anyone in support and anyone opposed to the petition, that your presentation should be limited to three minutes. Questions and responses must be directed through the chairman. The board's rules and regulations direct the board to specifically look for information which supports the petitioner's claim. As such, the petitioner should identify and factually support the basis for the petition. I hereby advise the petitioners and all interested persons that this board is the Zoning Board of Appeals. This board's authority exists pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A and is limited in scope and deals with the use of land as regulated by Chapter 86 of the Ordinances of the City of Fall River. Additional permits, licenses, reviews, and or approvals may be required for the specific development and or use which is the subject of the petition before the Zoning Board this evening. The clerks in the Building, Planning, Engineering, and Licensing Departments are competent in the discharge of their duties as clerks. They are, however, not lawyers and are not competent to give legal advice. The action taken by this board has a real and lasting effect upon the title to your real estate. I urge all petitioners to seek competent legal counsel before, filling your peti before filing your petitions and after a decision of the board has been made. For example, there is a city ordinance, 2015-11, Section 10-1 requiring site plan reviews. A copy of the ordinance is available at the city clerk's office or from the planning department. I remind everyone that the building inspector is the zoning enforcement authority and you are here this evening because the building inspector has determined that your proposed action is contrary to the City of Fall River zoning ordinances. The City Charter, Section 9-18, mandates that all multiple member bodies develop and adopt rules or policies for public comment. We have adopted such a policy, which in short, uh, allows you to sign up in the back of the room. At the end of the meeting, will allow you to address the board for things that are pertinent to the zoning board. Administratively, pursuant to our rules and regulations, Section A, Paragraph 2, Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A, Section 12, and Section 9-7 of the City Charter, the Board shall elect a Chair, Vice Chair, and Clerk from its permanent members at its first meeting on the new year. We could not take that action at our January 2020 meeting because it was inadvertently missing from the published agenda. We can't take care of that administrative duty this evening because it was in fact included in our February 2020 uh, published notice. I cannot participate in agenda items number three, six, and seven this evening. Uh, it has been our practice to entertain petitioners' requests to have the matters continued to the next meeting when we expect alternate members to be available and have a full five-member board to decide your petition. 
If those items go forward this evening, then they will be chaired by Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette and the unanimous vote will be required to obtain the relief requested in the petition. First, we will dispense with the administrative component of electing the chair, vice chair, and clerk for the 2020 calendar year. Thereafter, if the petitioners of items 3, 6, and 7 request, request to continue their matter to our March 19, 2020 meeting, we will act upon those requests. Otherwise, we will start with agenda item 01. Are there any questions before we begin? Okay. Here we none, so let's take care of the administrative component. So for calendar year 2020, we need to elect a chair, vice chair, and clerk. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate uh, yourself as the chair to continue the same slate as existing. Attorney Morissette, vice chair, and James Cochran, as well. Okay. Second. Any discussion, on, any second on that motion? Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of that motion. All right. The slate for 2020 is Chair David Assad, Vice Chair Carolyn Morissette, and Clerk James Calkins. Uh, the petition is for items three, six, and seven. We will request the <clears throat> So agenda item number three. Ian Carey, 60 Garside Street, Lot S 1144. You're going to give it to us in writing, okay. so we don't run afoul of the. It's a special permit request pursuant to Section 86424, requesting to change existing non-conforming use of commercial bank into a 10-unit apartment development consisting of five two-unit buildings with garages and off-street parking. So that's Dan's. Dan Aguiar is making the request on behalf of the petitioner Ian Perry. Is there anyone here that came in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here that came opposed to this petition? Uh, can I get a motion? Was there anybody? I didn't see anyone. Motion to allow the continuance to the March 19th meeting. So moved. Motion by Jim Calkin, second by John Frank. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, so that's continued. Uh, agenda items number six and seven. I saw Attorney Gloria Pacheco. Do you want to continue them or you want to go forward, Gloria? No, I'm to the table. I submitted two letters this afternoon. Oh, so we have two letters from Attorney Gloria Pacheco to to table these matters, agenda items number six and seven. Six is Patricia Connolly and Pamela Rigo, care of attorney Gloria Pacheco, vacant lot on Grinnell Street, lot F1720, a variance request to build a single family home, waiver use and minimal frontage, side yard and area requirements in the R4 district, lot size 5,180 plus or minus square feet. Did anyone come out this evening in favor of this petition? Did anyone come out in favor or opposed to this petition? Okay, so can I get a motion to continue this until act on for a written request to K table it until the March 19th meeting? Move continuance of item number six and seven. Six and seven. Meeting. Okay, so let me read number seven. Broadway Properties LLC, care of attorney Gloria Pacheco, 1172 1174 Bedford Street, lot L91. Variance request to construct a four unit <coughs> retail building, waiving requirements in the BN. Uh, district lot size 12,671 plus or minus square feet. Did anyone come out this evening in favor of this petition or opposed to this petition? Okay. This so, request was also to amend for the next meeting. And the letter from Attorney Gloria Pacheco for agenda item number seven was to amend the petition so the appropriate fees would have to be paid along with that, if my recollection is correct. So, do I have a motion to table them and have the appropriate fees paid to make it to the March 19, 2020 meeting? So. Second? Second. Second, Dan Dupere. All those in favor? Okay, so agenda items number six and seven will be on the March 19th meeting. Glory will pay the appropriate fees to get it put forward. Okay. And I think that administratively that takes care of that. Uh, agenda item number 01, Weavers Cove Industrial Park, LLC, care of Richard A. Nyland, Jr., Esquire. Uh, this matter was tabled from our January 16th meeting, uh, but since that meeting, uh, Corporation Council uh, and Mr. Nyland have filed with the Land Court a stipulation of dismissal. This case no longer exists before the Land Court, therefore there's no further action for this board to take. Uh, so agenda item number zero one would be off the list. Uh, is there anyone here that came in favor of this petition or opposed to this petition? Okay. 
So, agenda item number 02, ASE Investments, LLC, 69R Alden Street, lot J279, amended petition for variance and special permit request to construct a 16-unit townhouse-style development consisting of four three-unit buildings and two two-unit buildings, providing 36 parking spaces, waiving requirements in the CMD Commercial Mill District, lot size 68,000 plus or minus square feet, with no frontage on an accepted street. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. For the record, my name is Dan Aguiar. I am a senior project manager at SciTech Engineering with addresses here in the city, as well as Dartmouth and Marshfield. I'm just going to drop off a couple of colored drawings of what I'll put up on the presentation board in a couple of minutes, just for you, in case you can't see the board. And as the chairman stated, this application is filed on behalf of the property owner, ASE Investments, LLC, uh, with real estate of 69R Alden Street. You would all know this parcel of land as Parker Candy. Uh, I'm sure you all grew up, or if you hadn't, you would have known through the city that down within the existing mill complex of, uh, off of Alden Street, where they had been recently had some renovations of some mill buildings, and I apologize if not everyone can see this, but um, I want the audience to see it as well as the board, but the board has the, the smaller color ones. Uh, so again, for orientation purposes, north is headed up straight on the plan that you have as well as mine. <coughs> Shaded in this yellow line is the parcel uh, in question. You'll see in this gray area, that's the foundation remains of the Parker Candy building that had been uh, demolished after a fire many, many years ago. On this plan, we have Quickish Ann Street running south to north, and then Alden Street running west to east. Directly to the west of our parcel is the first mill complex that had gotten um, rehabbed uh, that fronts along Quickish Ann Street. There's a commercial component up along this area here, and I believe these are called the Kirkhoffs, I believe. Uh, then directly to our east, is the Fall River Knitting Mill that within the last year or two also went that same type of renovation. This All this property was under one uh, property owner many, many years ago, and in the early 40s, there was a subdivision parcel uh, that had taken place for this, creating separate lots for the different mill buildings as well as the Park of Candy Building, which is ours, which is this rear parcel here as well. And what I want you to see on this plan is that during that subdivision process, and I have other copies of the subsequent plans to it, when they had gone through the subdivision process, um, they went to the extent of creating a right of way that you see shown here in pink. On your plan, you also see that shown as a dotted yellow line. And that was to provide access and to maintain access for this parcel of land from Alden Street. And that currently now coming down through that area, you can make that maneuver and come through as well. Additionally on this plan and on other subdivision plans, which I think I did submit, um, the Curtin Lofts building, there is also a way running through that parking lot to their entrance that the Park of Candy building uh, retained rights for access in and out of the building. So even though we have a landlocked parcel of land, at that time they went through the extent of making sure that there was a deeded right of way through the land court, and these are land court plans, and through the subsequent deeds, that that right of way and access remained open so that Parker Candy could use it as well as the other fossils as well. So that gets us to the existing condition of where the site began. Now this fossil of land has come into the current ownership um, through a purchase process that the city was involved in taking. Someone bought the fossil at auction and they've now come up with what we are here to discuss this evening. You may recall the initial presentation of the initial proposal was to build a five or a six story building with 32 to 36 units in a singular building. After the owner of the property uh, discussed that proposal with one of the abutters and listened to some of the concerns that they had, uh, he circled back with me and came up with the scheme that you see before you today, which is a townhouse style development 
of a three unit building, three unit building, three unit, three, a two, and then another two. So shaded in light gray on this plan, as well as the other one that you have as well, that is that same right of way access that we have to get in off of Alden Street. And then also, again, coming in through the Knitting Mills property, we have a way that's not as well defined as this, but it's clear that we, that we do have additional access that we're not necessarily counting on, but we do have that access. So this right of way actually straddles our lot line as well as the abutting lot lines of both the Knitting Mills property and the, and the curtain lofts as well. So when we went into this uh, proposal, we wanted to ensure that we had adequate parking. You'll see on the submitted plan, we exceed the parking requirements for the number of units we have. It's on the plan, I believe we have proposed 37, sorry, 36 spaces where 32 are required, and that's two units per each unit. So we provided uh, that additional uh, parking on site as well, not impeding the existing right of way. The existing right of way will stay intact and in fact, if you look at the more detailed close-up plan, and not that it's information that, that the Zoning Board of Appeals is really concerned with, but when one of the abutting uh, properties developed their land, uh, a number of items were constructed within that right-of-way and would technically impede our traffic, getting it in and out of the site, also for them as well as us. Um, but that's really not a concern of yours. So to make sure that that wasn't a concern of yours or the neighbors or to us, what we've shown on this plan is basically an expansion of that right of way to allow two-way traffic to continue in both sites. What happens is when we come around this corner, there was a concrete sidewalk that you'll see built within the shaded gray area, a berm, a transformer. So there were some items that were built within the right of way that we have access to that squeezes our width to only singular traffic and actually on their plans they have singular traffic in that direction we however need two-way directional traffic so that we can get back out of our site they have the luxury of getting around their building and going back out through their own land but we don't have rights to that right-of-way so we need this right-of-way to be open for two lanes so what we propose is expanding that right-of-way and the abutter will have accessibility to use that as well so they will now also have two-way traffic on that side of the building, making their traffic patterns better as well. Uh, so as you see on the plan here, duck shaded in the darker gray area, those are our proposed parking spaces, well within our property boundary limits. You're expanding the right of way on your own property. That's correct. So we're basically, we're, we're taking our own land. Yeah, no, I just want to be clear that you're expanding To make things work better for just ourselves and for the abutter as well. Okay. Um, rather than go through the litigation of, hey, Take out your take sidewalk, out. take out your transformer. We have rights to this going in and out. We've chosen not to go that route. We always still could, uh, but we've chosen just to basically fight it and expand the right of way onto our own property. And whatever legal documents and right of way expansion we need to provide for the owner of the knitting mills property, that can be uh, written into the agreement that uh, or conditions that this board grants. The site itself. Um, Borders on the Quickishan River, as you can see in the aerial photos, as well in this area. Uh, that Quickishan River has a bordering vegetated wetland associated with it, has a riverfront area, and a floodplain. We've ensured that all of our construction activity is outside of the 25 foot riverfront area, outside of the floodplain. We will have some buffer zone activity, and that is a permit that the Conservation Commission and DEP uh, will need to grant, and that's a separate filing after we, after we get our relief hopefully, through the Zoning Board of Appeals. So when we looked at the property, we said, you know, do we really need another high-rise, high-density apartment building, or can we provide some additional um, type of housing in this area that will allow for the creation of some green space, allow for, you know, the, the use of the Quickishan River and, and the views of it. So we've come up with this design so that we can have green space throughout the development and not put everything into one big building, needing a massive parking all in one parking area. Uh, I think this proposal is far less dense, of course, than what our previous application was, uh, but I think it will introduce some, some much needed housing in that area other than high-rise apartment buildings. So the relief that we're here to seek this evening, although, as I showed you on this land court plan, there was a right-of-way created which we have 169.3 feet of frontage along this way 
and then an additional 520 feet this way. Um, the fact that that's a way and it does, you know, open up to Alden Street, we have felt to protect the client and any potential landowner that we should seek zoning relief basically under the guise that we don't have legal frontage on an approved way in the city of Fall River. Although we can say, you know, we have frontage on this way, just to make sure, we want to make sure that this board understands we don't have legal frontage, which I believe the requirement in, in this commercial mill district would be 100 feet on an actual approved way. So that's the variance portion of what we're here for this evening. That's the singular variance that we need. Going beyond to the special permit portion of the process, in this commercial mill district, as you all know, uh, the board has the ability to grant uh, a permit for multifamily housing. And that's the direction that we've gone in. We've ensured that we've met all of the building setbacks for the commercial mill district, which is 10 feet in the front, 10 side, and 10 rear. The minimum lot area is 10,000 square feet. We have 68,000 square feet. So the two sets of relief that we're here for is one for the variance with regards to no frontage on a public way, and two is a special permit to allow this multifamily housing uh, to come into this area. When you look at that special permit process, and you all know this, um, this use of 16 unit homes, uh, a pop townhouse style, um, is far less detrimental than any of the commercial uses that we could have now within this what was a commercial development, which has now come back to being residential with the redevelopment of these mills. So these two mills received the exact same special permit with regards to expansion of multifamily housing in a commercial mill district on a much higher scale. I believe this is 100 units, and I'm not sure how many are in the, the curtain walls. Uh, so this is a much smaller scale project, a little bit different type of housing, but again, the same permitting process of being a special permit uh, through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, one other item is just so that you understand beyond, and you do beyond the scope of the zoning board decision, there are a number of other permits that we need to get through the building department, through site plan review, through the conservation commission. So this is just the first hurdle of moving this project forward. But without this initial uh, permit, uh, the others would need to be completed. If you have any specific questions regarding any of the construction activity, any of the legal acquisitions, the right of way, anything like that, I'd be more than glad to answer those questions. Uh, and I do believe you have some additional information in your packages of the old subdivision plans and how this parcel came to be. Uh, but if you have anything that you need cleared up with that, just let me know. And how large will the individual units be? How large will they yeah. be? Um, I believe they are approximately, if you look at this corner unit, item number three, so 24 feet wide by 36 feet deep, two stories. Are they all gonna be the same? These will all be the same, other than the fact that this is a, a cluster of three, this is a cluster of two, and this one, you see one unit one is a little bit larger, and that's so that we can create a handicap accessible unit only on one floor. Any, uh, how many bedrooms difference. in each unit, or? Um, it, it could potentially be two or three, so it won't be limited to the number of bedrooms. My guess is a three. Emergency access for so the fire department? Well, room. currently now, the access that we're proposing to use is the same access that this mill complex uses and this mill complex uses. So we have we have a deeded right of way to use what I've shown you shaded in gray, plus this other right of way. When it comes to emergency vehicles, there are a number of different venues and avenues for them to. But because like, the other access is wide enough for a fire or Yes, yeah, because what happens is even this mill complex now, and again, this is only for emergency purposes, right. the fire department would have the ability to use this right-of-way, this right-of-way back out to Alden, this right-of-way back out to Wickersham. So there are multiple points that they could get. And you can see on here, this is all wide open parking area, all wide open parking area. You can come right up to the buildings here, right up to the buildings here, right up along. This is all paved parking lot all the way up to, to that point. Okay. Any other questions? Dan? Carol? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to this petition? Opposed? Yes, sir. You identify yourself for the record, please. Absolutely. Uh, can I put some things on this table? Yes, you can. Thank you. I mean, wait, wait, why don't you, right there. Oh, fine. Right in front. 
Dan, he, he's all right. He won't bite you. No. <laughs> as long as you guys, it's okay for me to stay. Just you stay right there. Uh, I'm Lee Waltman. I'm with the Knitting Mill Apartments and a Butter. Uh, we opened 100 units uh, of senior affordable uh, apartments in the summer. Uh, everything's going great. We've rented up. Things are good. Uh, we provide the city with 5,200 square feet of free space. Actually, it's a dollar a year for their uh, Flint Senior Center, which is the uh, premier senior center among the four that the city operates. Uh, the only problem we have is we do have some traffic problems. We have elderly people. We have 150 approximately living in our units. Uh, the Flint Senior Center draws up to 100 a day, sometimes more. And next to our current loft, they have over, they have almost 100 units with well over 100 people. I don't know how many they have. And people are coming back and forth across this little right of way, these little right, rights of way from their building to our building. By the way, do I have more than three minutes or do I have Keep to? talking. Okay. Um, I had a, a five page thing to read, which I'm not going to read. But um, I'm going to, if you don't mind, hand you uh, pictures, which will save me from talking so much. Uh, and Dan, I, I'll probably ask you some questions you may or may, may, may or may not be able to answer. Well, no, why don't you direct the questions come through? Yes. Me. Okay. Fine. So, what you're looking at is a north-south uh, piece of property. Uh, at the north end is the south part of the senior center of our building. Uh, the prop the uh, street on the right is the right of way and it's one way traffic going south. Uh, the bump out on the left of our building, well you can see the, uh, the gray steps, that's the main entrance, one of the two main entrances and the only direct entrance into the Flint Senior Center. Uh, because there's a five foot um, sidewalk there, the right-of-way shrinks to 25 feet. Uh, there's an island that you see on the other side of it. It's also in the plans that you have in front of you, the island. So you're, when people come to pick up the seniors, they park there a lot because some people, seniors don't want to walk all the way to our parking lots. And it's quite crowded in there, and we do have some traffic problems. People from Knitting Mill, go over to visit Curtin Loft and people from Curtin Loft come to our place and there's people walking from the building on the left to the building on the right, right to that where that car is, where those steps are all the time and both apartments allow dogs and cats and people are always out walking dogs and cats and we are concerned about uh, the increased traffic that we'll get from this project. Uh, another thing to look at is the, uh, the maroon truck, which is in the right of way at the north end of uh, this little uh, driveway. Um, not that people park there often, but that section of the mill bumps out into the right of way by about two and a half feet, and then there's a uh, seven foot sidewalk. So that right of way right there is only 22 and a half feet and also creates some parking uh, and traffic problems and is one reason why that section has to be um, one way. Now, where the snow begins is about the end of our blacktop on the right and our property line runs to the west, which is to the left, approximately 10 or 12 feet in the neighborhood of those yellow cones. This was approved by this committee, this board, uh, as green space. The little hill where the snow is, is a little hill of green space. And, and, and then this asphalt is part of our runoff and so our property line goes basically halfway across 
this to the, to the area near those cones. And we're under the impression that it can't be black dot. Uh, but, I mean, I, I've been told that that area cannot be black topped because it was approved for us as green space and, uh, and that's our property. If that's the case, then they can't cross our property to get to the road. But that's for lawyers to figure out. So, Chairman, you want to do it bit by bit? Well, just, just so they don't get. I, I just have the question uh, before I ha ask you to answer. The 30 foot right of way, and I know this just from my own independent research, the land court has established that 30 foot right of way that gets Alden Street down to this piece of property. What you're talking about is these expansions of the sidewalk and other things into it. Those are encroachments that you, you or your predecessor and titles have existed there, which anyone that has the benefit of this right of way could object to. Um, the fact that you own it, which I think you do, you own to that westerly boundary line, but it's subject to the right to pass and repass by everyone that was established by the land court. Um, so this board, this board, uh, if we did anything, and I don't remember that we did anything, we have no jurisdiction to change ownership or rights to pass or repass. That exists, and uh, again, that's that's for the other lawyers that get paid more bucks than this board does to figure out. Um, <clears throat> but the um, the what I'm understanding from Mr. Aguiar is instead of making an issue about your encroachment into the right of way. They're proposing to use their own land to make it wide enough to have the pass and repass to this prison. Unless I'm mistaken, no, you're, that's, you're, you're that's what you're doing. To make sure that we have a yeah. minimum 22 foot and as far as the maintenance, that both entities and, could use. And as far as the maintenance of that right of way, um, you're the Servian estate, and this particular property is the dominant estate, and there was a recent couple of recent cases that came down dealing with this that said that they have the right to maintain and preserve and uh, do whatever they want to do to keep the right of way open and workable. Um, I just throw that out there by way of discussion. Dan, okay. do you want I to respond? respond to at least a few items that Mr. Waltman had, had to be done with. Um, getting back to, I, I've, been, I've been up He's there got a times. I don't know exactly what, what we're dealing with. Um, so we have two developed parcels on either side of us, large apartment complexes, 100 units in this building, for instance. This parcel specifically, the Knitting Mills Apartments, through the Zoning Board special permit process, allowed them to only provide one parking space per unit. That's not the norm. So to allow them to do what they wanted to do, this board went beyond what would normally take place and granted them relief to allow one space per unit. Well, what's happening is one space a unit isn't cutting it. Mr. Waltman had intentions of purchasing this parcel of land but didn't want to spend the right amount of money to do it. So my client purchased the land. Now, we have, again, as the chairman stated, we have this right of way that the knitting mills through their development plans, which I have, so this wasn't just built by accident. The plans that were submitted show the right of way and show them proposing constructed improvements within the right of way. Well, you can't do that. Just because you need a sidewalk, you can't just build one and impede the access. At the time, we're not worried about the access, we're going to buy that piece of land. Well, sometimes that doesn't always happen. So, again, my client is going above and beyond to reduce the size of this project. This is a 16-unit development. What traffic impact is 16 units going to have that 200 hasn't had already? And we're going to improve the accessibility for both parcels, the knitting mills as well as our own. So to come in and, and speak that grounds for not moving this project forward is regards to traffic, parking, and right of ways which they diminish through their construction activities is absurd to me, absolutely absurd. And I've, I've been coming before this board since 1994. I remember sitting here when this petition came before the board and attorney Jay Clark and presented it to the board. I sat there saying, how in God's name are they improving something with one parking space per unit? 
and you know, my client has played ball through this entire process. Day one, I informed them, and this is probably six or eight months ago, I explained to my client, David, if you'd like to, you can have your attorney, Arthur Diacentis, send the abutter a letter asking them to remove these sidewalks, remove their transformer, and widen the right of way back out to 30 feet. He chose not to do that because he's not a land developer. Okay? He's, a, he's a car salesman in fixed used cars. He bought this parcel of land to try and create a few apartments as a retirement so that he could collect some income in the future. Not a gigantic project in a city that he grew up in. Still resides in. And so for them now to be handcuffed by things that larger developers and larger developments have done to this piece of land, I understand that he purchased this piece of land from the city with no promises. But knowing full well, he made sure that he had the protective uh, rights to this right of way. He didn't just go buy a piece of land and say, well, I'm going to take a shot. He did his homework. He made sure that he had the right of way. And all these things weren't constructed necessarily when that process was going on. He initially had us go out and do a, a survey, and our survey revealed these things. To make sure that my survey was correct, I went and pulled all the files from the abutter and their, and their plans. Identical. Identical. Um, we're not proposing constructing anything within the right of way. We have to leave it open. That's what right of ways are, especially when they deed it through the land board. You, you can't play with that. So there are a number of improvements within this area. Now, luckily, we don't need 30 feet of this right of way. We only need 22 feet of it. That's the travel way that we need that meets the requirements for parking. If we needed a 30-foot way, there'd be a lot more stuff that needs to come up. Luckily, we don't have to go that route, and we were trying not to go that route. And if there was no opposition to our project, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. But when you have an abutter that blatantly goes like this and then now wants to stick it down my client's throat because they bought it before they could, that, that's just not right. All right. It's not at all. Legally or not legally, it's well, What's just before not. the board is a special permit and the variance. That's correct. That's the, the background is interesting, but that's what we have before us. That is correct. Mr. Walton, is there anything else? I just would say that uh, Kurt and Love tried to buy this property when they built, we tried to buy it when we built. <clears throat> we had a purchase and sale to buy it uh, for a number of years and then it ended up going to the city. And uh, we were told by well, many- let, let me st The history is good, okay. but that really has nothing okay, to do well, with- Okay, well he made some allegations that I- That's why I shut him off, because yeah. I don't want to hear so, him. Uh, if you want one, one answer, we were told at the time, and we bid on the property, that no one would buy this property because there was no access to it um, and uh, it, it was almost useless for anything but parking and green space is what we wanted it for. So that's what we were told by many very bright people. In any case, um, we believe there's a, uh, a traffic problem. Uh, we believe that uh, at least some people that I deal with, that I work with, uh, believe that uh, black topping our, our property is not ex acceptable oh, and, in, and we might see you again. I got it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. That's all. Okay. Mr. Walt was the first one in opposition. You're in opposition, sir? Um, not really. But Will you identify yourself for the record and tell us what it is you'd like to tell us? I'm the president from the Fink Neighborhood Association. And the reason that I'm not uh, in opposition or in favor is the reason I'm here today because I had no information on this project. So I have all the questions. I had to come here to hear the answers for some of my questions. Okay. One thing that I'd like to, sh to tell the board is the neighborhood has been working together with all these projects that open up. We were in favor. We don't want to stop nobody from progress. But we went so far as writing letters supporting their the projects uh, to the state so they could get some credit, uh, tax credit on their projects. So we're not here opposed. I will just, I hope that I had um, a phone call or something um, because I know I had a couple of calls already with questions and I had no answers and I said I was going to come here to, to know. 
one of the things that we were trying to do on that neighborhood is, and and was something was a request that we did when they approached us. Excuse me. Was we? It's very important the age that's going to be renting on this uh, uh, on this pro uh, on this project. So we have both. We have over 200 apartments that are there now for 65 and over. Now is how much difference it's going to make putting this project right on the center of those two ugly uh, uh, apartments, living apartments. That's what the concern I have right now. I didn't heard anything about drainage water from this project because we do have a flood problem on Quickishan Street. Uh, again, traffic. One of the things that we were happy that we were able to put people there 65 and older and was because half of those people actually drive, okay? So the other half don't drive. So all this working uh, together, that's, that's how much work we will be able to to turn and I hope we keep going. We have two more, two more mills there to, to be fixed, and we will keep supporting as much we can. But I mean, it has to be. We have to work together. We have to work together. And and with that, I'm not again. I'm repeating. I'm not saying that I'm opposed to. I'm just want to make sure that this answers that I have and that I just asked you probably had nothing to do with your boards. But I hope those questions have answers. Um, and it's not too late, it's like a couple of other projects that the city is working right now, that it's too late for the neighbors to, uh, to, to have uh, and to work on them. So since it's the, it's the beginning, let's work together. Me, as president of the neighborhoods, I have a responsibility because I don't want them to say, how come this was done and you know, and you didn't went there, you didn't know anything about, I'm getting my information, and I just hope that I, that I could, you know, um, and I will be here. If I had the answers, I will be here, because there was no mean for me to be here. The only reason I came here was because I needed those answers, and I have a few. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Aguiar has his hand up. Maybe he can respond to if some of that. I can respond, that. Mr. Chairman. Um, I know Mr. Caesar, and I applaud the work that he does. He's actually a client, and I've worked for him on some other projects in the city. He has my phone number. He has my email. He doesn't hesitate to use it when he needs to. This petition has been before the Zoning Board of Appeals since October. Plans on file, public record. Plans, revised plans. The neighborhood group, I don't believe, is on the distribution list as a direct abutter or an abutter to abutter. So notification would not necessarily be sent to him. They have access to the agendas to every city meeting, whether it's zoning, planning, conservation commission. So to say that, no, I, I got, I got the notice issue. Here, it's not an issue, but can you address? Is it something that you've addressed already for drainage and sewage, or is that something in, that we're going to say um, it's going to be I part of site plan? I review. address the fact that we do need to file through site plan review, um, as you can see, and as as the as the planner will, I assume, agree with. We have a site here that is quite impervious already. At the end of the day, stormwater wise, we'll be making a drastic improvement to the site post construction than what sits out there now and then what was there previously. We My recollection about this site, there, there are utilities that go to the site already. That's correct. There's sewer and there's water. There's and sewer there's and water within that right of way. No, no, I, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. I know yes. that, I know that from my yes. previous work in the area that there is water and sewer going to this location. So that's not something that's going to be served by septic systems. No. It's going no. to be tied into the city sewer, city, city sewer. water. City water. And the, my recollection is the elect electricity is still there. That, those type of utilities yeah, actually, are still coming down. So, somebody actually There's put a, big a transfer pole right in there. the right of way. That's right. We're going to have to pay to move and, and put underground utilities to that point. But no, I mean, anything in, under the veins of construction activity, would be under the building department, conservation site. commission, and site plan review, uh, the purview of that. The zoning board is charged with strictly dealing with, as you know, the special permit request and the variance with regards to, to no frontage. I think anyone looking at the proposed traffic, um, this traffic generated by these 16 units would be 
far less, far less detrimental than any commercial use that could be taken on by right. Um, and again, this is a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of vehicles that access this entire, we'll call it a complex. But there are a number of mill, different mill developed sites, commercial uh, business uses and apartments in this area. I've been on there on many occasions. It's not an overtaxed vehicular area. There aren't cars coming in and out and it's, it's not a super busy location. And again, we do have the ability to get in and out of this site pretty freely. Um, and I cannot imagine that the traffic or either circulation for pedestrians, vehicles, or turning maneuvers would be difficult for anyone. Okay. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Caesar. Is that Thank sufficient you. response? Thank you. Anyone else in here in favor or opposed? Okay. One, one, one Good. question I didn't hear answered was uh, it's not it's not age restricted. No, no, no. There, there, there'll be no age restriction. And again, and, and, and I work. For many developers in the city, and, and everyone goes this age-restricted route, one, because it's easier, and there is a need for it. But we've done multiple, multiple, multiple age-restricted developments. It gets to a point where you can see what rents are and even three tenements, and there needs to be another housing stock available to people similar to this. People that can't afford their own single-family home, they don't want to necessarily live in a tenement like I grew up in, so this gives them a middle of the road. You've seen a number of these over the past three or four years, Rodman Street, Globe Street, um, Evelyn's Way, Griffin Street, a number of special permits within the last year of this type of housing, which the city is in dire need of. So no, it would not be age restricted. Does that answer your question? <clears throat> okay. Anything else, members of the board? Bill, do you have anything you want to? I didn't, and I didn't have the research on it. Isn't there a, a plan, ex spur extension? Was it for the for the pathway? There is. The path. There is. I don't see it. I, I know. It, I know. Well, no. It, I know it's on this part. I know it's on the two. I, I believe. I actually believe that it's on the other side because so. this this parcel of land did used to continue on across Quickasham. Mm -hmm. um, I was not able to ascertain any existing easement um, for any expansion of, of the bike path. Um, if there is one in place, if there's one in place, and then we have to deal with. But I I, I am unaware of one. I tried to find. I don't think it's on this side. I, I think don't it's think on it's the other side. There is an easement, 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 just for the heck of it, that, that comes across uh, your lower parking lot. Our lower parking lot and across their property, but I don't know where it is on their property. There's also some flowage rights that exist there too, but that doesn't. That was for the old. That was for the old mills for the water coming diverted from the Quickasham that way. Anyway, okay. Anyone else? Did, did, is Father Travasos Park there, right on the right? On the right. Father Travasos would be yes. to the east. It'll if be you look at the, the aerial photograph, yes, you see to it the right. to the east of the knitting mills, and yes. Can I just walk there for one second? Yeah, good. Well, let's get it all out. I don't remember any taking of anything there or somebody taking it. Anyway, there's this granite, I'm not sure if it's that or in here, there's a granite outcropping that the right of way comes right next to it. And, it. and it crosses our parking lot pretty low. Mm. And, and it comes across their property, but I don't know where. Thank you. All right, members of the board, you've heard we've got two we've got two pieces to deal with. One is a variance for the waiver of frontage because there is no frontage. We've got the frontage for this particular lot or the access coming off the 30-foot uh, way that comes off Alden Street that's being delineated there. Dan didn't show the other uh, access off Quickasham Street, so we we're just left with the 30-foot wide way from Alden Street that we give. Have it in your package, though. It's not, it's not on the plan. That's no, all no, I'm no, saying. No. It's not on the plan. But I submitted the supplemental yeah. information of the land plans. I yeah. can add another one. Okay. If you don't have it. No, I'm just, yeah. just kidding. I just want to make sure yeah. that we've got. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. must be there. I just yeah. don't have it at my fingertips. That's all. Sean, as well. Yeah, so the way. Here as well. Is it? And this is, the, this is the initial plan. What was the, what was the whip up position? It, it, it's, it's not. It's not. It's just a drive. It's not as well defined. 
but it's there. Yeah. But at least the 30 foot land court one is defined. That is defined. The third, and that's so that's going to be the one that we'll deal with. There is in and the we're chain. We're not relying on that. Other no, no, the quicker chance. But I know in the chain of title, there is the right to pass and repass from quicker chance street to that and to the back. So that's that's number one is the variance part. So I don't know whether someone wants to make a motion to accept the waiver. Question. Good. We, this is the last one, but we're going to start to look. Last one. Good. Um, if if the easement for the second phase of the bike path crosses where those buildings are, does that have an impact? Well, my again, I'll defer to the lawyers. But if there's going to be, if there's been a taking then somebody's going to get compensated for that bike path because I don't think the bike path showed up in the deed to ASC. I don't think the bike path taking showed up in your deed, and I don't think it showed up in 420 Cookishan Street. As so what, what happened is uh, Gary Wrights has sold part of our parking lot, with, with what is now our parking lot, to the bike path people. That's different selling if there was, in fact, a grant of it. Um, you're, when you're talking about this easement for the bike path, I don't remember when I was doing the titles to those parcels, the city or someone else having a taking by eminent domain to say I'm taking this property for the bike path or a grant. As I, am, as I recall, they did not take it by eminent domain, yeah. it's the, the bike path people. So, I think, so I think in the, the deed into ASC and what the city gave, I don't remember seeing a subject to the dimensions were given, this is what the size of the lot was, and I don't remember any, and I'll defer to Dan because I don't have the deeds in front of me, that said that there was any restriction or subject to the right to pass and repass of a bike path. And Mr. Chair, if, if it does come about, as Mr. Walton was asking, um, that an easement is in place, we either have to honor it, you have to honor relocate it, it or Correct. Revise the building location. But I don't. But I don't remember as I was preparing. I don't remember seeing anything in the deed from the city that said that there was anything. It was just a meets and bounds description. You can I'll, I'll keep. I would well, no, because we're going to start deliberating yeah. right now, so it's not a question. Right. So that's why I said if there is one, we have to abide by it. Yeah. All right. I'd make a motion to grant the variance on the waiver of the frontage. Okay, so Carolyn makes the motion to waive the frontage and accept the 30 foot right of way as the frontage for this lot. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Second. Oh, that's what that is? So Dan, Dan Dupier second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Okay. So that the variance for the frontage is granted. The next part of this particular uh, is for the special permit. Special permitting is allowed under our grid, and what the board <coughs> has to find simply is that such non-residentially zoned area would not be adversely affected by such a residential use and that permitted use in such a zone are not noxious to a multifamily use. That's under section, that's Massachusetts General Law Chapter Section 9, uh, 1, 2, 3, third paragraph, uh, first sentence. So that's, the fun. that's what we have to determine if we want under our grid that allows multifamily uses in the commercial mill district. If we have that finding, then we can grant the special permit. We also have the authority, if we're granting the special permit, uh, the authority to put conditions if we want to put any conditions in there. But, so the first thing we need to do is if you want to go forward with the special permit, then we need to find that the non-residentially zoned area would not be adversely affected by such a residential use and that the permitted uses in such a zone are not noxious to a multifamily use. I'll make the motion. All right, John Frank makes the motion. Do we have a second on the motion? Second, Jim Corkins. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Four or five. So the finding is that the special permit is granted for those units on this. Go ahead. Yes. Two years, two, because it's a the variance, well, let, let's deal with it. So the, the special permit, two years, so I don't want you coming back for the two years, but the variance has to be one year, and if you need the extension, come back for the, I mean, that's, that's going to be the six-month extension, but that one I don't think we can grant for, for 18 months. I think you're going to get the year, but the special permit can be for two. So that's amending your motion 
two year for the grant of the special permit. Anyway. It has to go through all the other. If, unless you want to, if you want to express, if you want to expressly condition site plan, the I, I always like I always like seeing that in print. Absolutely. All right. So your motion is modified to include site plan review. Okay. All right. So okay, and for two years. So that's the motion. It's passed. Thank Five to that. That's been granted. Special permit and variance. Yeah. You want? You got it. Give me it for the record. Oh, she's, you've got the deed? Yeah. Okay. So I just wasn't quick enough to go through and find it. That's all right. I wouldn't go ahead So we've got this, we've got this. Thank you. So that was agenda items 02. Agenda item 03, Estate of Edward Amorin, 320 Renard Street, Lot E, 206466. This is an amended petition. Variance request to subdivide the existing parcel into two lots, leaving the existing two-family dwelling on one parcel of 17,900 plus or minus square feet, while constructing a new single-family dwelling on the second parcel of 8,200 plus or minus square feet, waiving requirements in the R8 district. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Dan Aguiar of SciTech Engineering, uh, representing the estate of Edward S. Amarin regarding the real estate at 320. Uh, Renard Street. You may recall at the last meeting we had presented a petition to you subdividing this parcel back into the original three assessed map and lot numbers. After discussions with the board and discussions with the neighbors, um, I requested that we be allowed to table the matter, come back to you with a revised plan which we had submitted back on January 21st, which creates a total of two lots, leaving 320 Renard Street on parcel one with 9,700 square feet and 123 feet of frontage on Renard Street, creating parcel two with 80 feet of frontage on Bratton Street and 8,200 square feet in area. Both of those frontage and area uh, that are being provided meet the requirements of the RA district. The only relief we're here to seek this evening. Excuse me, David, take it outside, please. Thank you. The only relief we're here seeking this evening, and as we had discussed that night, would be the rear yard setback to 320 Renard Street. You'll see where we have proposed 15 feet plus or minus off of that bulkhead, and then 15 feet off of um, the other rear lot line as well. So it so should be 20, but you're just seeking. That is correct. So, so you'd be granting a five foot relief of the rear yard um, 320. Both parcels meet all of the other area requirements. The proposed structure, we've shown uh, a building envelope that shows us meeting all of the building setbacks for the new parcel. So the new parcel, everything will conform. Parcel only... 2 is a perfectly conforming with a building envelope that perfectly conforms. That's correct. Parcel 1, the only relief that you're going to need there is the rear setback. The rear, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that garage is being raised. That's correct, yes. Um, so sorry, just read that. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, that's going to be an express condition yeah, if we not, grant it. If not, it has to be expressed in the decision, and we have to have it. Otherwise, I end up with that infamous case that keeps me up at night. Go ahead. Right. Any, anything else, Dan? That is it. Members of the board, any questions? Is there anyone here in favor of this petition? Is there anyone here opposed to the? Okay. I, I saw a hand. Wait, wait. I'm going to get to you. I will let you speak, but I saw these young ladies' hands. I wasn't sure. Opposed or in favor? You are in favor of it. You want to identify yourself for the record, please? Susan Martins. Yes. Um, 293 Caroline Street. Okay. I you're in favor of this petition. I am. Okay. Madam? Mitchell Yes. And you're in favor. Can I have an address, please? I'll leave it there. Mitchell Lemon. Mitchell Thank you. Sir? I'm a tenant. I love that. Okay. So you're in favor of it. All right. So those are all the people that are in favor. This side is opposed to it. Sir, I'll let you speak. You. Identify yourself, please. It's Richard Souza, Kennedy Street. I represent the new uh, Maplewood Association. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a, a meeting last night and discussed this again, and it appears to be uh, quite simple. Um, first of all, I have a, a question. Uh, Can you I ask your questions to me? That's Thank correct. You. Um, the, the sidewalk is in, indicated on the, on the, on the print. Okay, so that garage is—is uh, is that garage going to be demolished? Yes. Okay. So what we're doing is we're putting another house 
we have we have a two family house on the ex on the existing piece of property. We're all trying to add another house. We have we don't want postage stamp houses all over the Maplewood section. We brought this up to the board's attention before, I believe, uh, Earl Gaudet and that group. We don't want to have postage stamp houses like it is across the street from this particular uh, house right here in this area. The traffic on Renard Street can is I stop, horrendous Can I now. stop you right there for a minute, sure, sir? Sure, go ahead. Parcel number two that they're proposing. Correct is in all respects 100% conforming with what the zoning is. That's correct. So it's not a postage stamp well, plot. That's another it's 8,200 square feet, 80 foot frontage, and it meets all the dimensional side yard, front yard, rear yard requirements. That's correct. We are concerned that something is gonna happen, we're gonna have a, a house here, and then when we come back, somebody's gonna come back and wanna put another house alongside of the two family house. That's going to get. Well, I tried that but last right time. Right now, we said it's, no. it's only it's only one. Can house. I stop you again, sir? Go ahead. Last time, that was the original proposal. Correct. They we that was getting rejected. They came back and amended their proposal to only this new lot and the two family would exist as it is. And some of the conversation last time was there will be no further subdivision and no further expansion. Okay. So this house will go in, but no, no, no additional house here. That will be an express condition if this board grants it. This board may still deny it, but the discussion last time mm -hmm. when they were asking for three and the board was, we were saying, how about this and how about that, mm -hmm. they got the message because we weren't, we were limited to two, we could get one perfectly conforming lot, the other lot is greater in square footage than what's required, but because it's a pre-existing non-conforming two-family, we the general conversation was for that 320 Renault Street, there would be no further subdivision or any further expansion. So that'll be it. That, if we grant, if we grant this, that those will be express conditions from this board to that to this grant. Please right. continue. Well, we still uh, we'd like to object to it. Oh, um, you can have the right to yeah, object, that's true. but I just want to make sure and, that when and, you and talk about postage stamps, uh, it's yeah. not a small well, lot. Well, all the houses across the street, some of them don't even have enough depth uh, in for the driveway to park a car in the in the driveway itself without it interfering into the sidewalk. So you have cars sticking in the sidewalk, people trying to walk. There's a lot of young people around there. Um, Women have to walk out in the street with carriages if they if they're pushing carriages uh, because there's not enough room to get by the cars that's in the driveway, but yet they're hanging over into the sidewalk. Um, that's a it, problem. That is. That's a problem, and you call the police when you have the cars parked in the sidewalk. Well, I have I have called called the police for other things like that, but yes, that's true. Um, the other thing is, the, the Granton Street is a very heavily uh, traveled street based because the uh, electrical wholesalers, which is right down the end of Grattan Street, is the only distributor that handles the southeastern Massachusetts, Tiverton, and Little Compton. Plus, they handle all of Aquinnick Island, Newport, Middletown. We have trailer trucks. We have six-wheel trucks. We have contractor trucks up and down Grattan Street because they come in from Rodman, they come in through through up through uh, Rodman and come down there because it, it gives them a right of way to go right into the driveway, which is the old um, R.E. Smith Company. Uh, electrical wholesalers have acquired the entire complex there, and uh, there's a big uh, solar farm out in, out behind it. But they have to supply all this equipment for it, the naval base, uh, naval underweapon station, Jamestown. This is where all these <coughs> contractors come. We have so much traffic on that street. So sometimes it's pathetic. Uh, they just put stop signs because the, that intersection of Grattan and uh, Renard were, was a very dangerous uh, intersection because they come flying down the hill uh, up from Grattan, um, and we have a lot of problems. And just in that area alone, I counted there's about 34 cars 
that's going to be part there. Now, if, if this here um, remains and nothing happens to that parcel one, then I can see them parking, but you had a, you'd have a two-family uh, two house, but no, no parking except for what's a little indicated in the dotted lines here on the north side of that house. So we have four, three, at least three families, if, and if they try to stretch it, um, you know, you know, we're going to have like four families now in, in this little block of thing. We have so much density in housing over there that we have no open space. And as we keep put letting people put a, a house on a piece of property that's equal to or less than or just around the, the, the size, we're going to have no, no air to breathe. It's all going to One be is stuck. perfectly conforming, the other one is double the size. That's true. They're both large. You know, but I'm just saying, I mean, it's so. I understand what you're saying. I am. I understand the concern. Um, this is what's being proposed as far as parking. If that's a consideration, the board may say that they need to have four parking spaces for 320 and two for parcel two. But I think parcel two is already proposing two or street parking. Uh, the other one, the board may consider if that's really a concern. Uh, maybe four or street parking spaces. The other, the other thing is, um, for some reason, the house is for sale, so this is not a hardship. Case. I can't, I, I can't address whether or not it's for sale or not. It is. Before. No, no. Right but what front. I'm saying is that's not really a concern okay. for this board. But All right. This is what we've got. As far as we're concerned, You're we've got enough it. houses up there. We don't want any more houses. Thank you, sir. The people uh, enjoy the property that they have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam. My name is Julie Jasmine. I live on Frost Street. Uh, my only objection would be is how many times do we have to come down here for this property? Last month we came and they were supposed to revise it. Well, they really didn't revise it. They just split it up where they're, they're, they're doing one lot. So what is going to happen to that number one lot? So we go from three to two. Yeah. And Fine. I just told this gentleman that if this board, I don't know what the board's going to vote, but mm -hmm. I can tell you that my input is two lots, one is perfectly conforming, this mm -hmm. other one is greater, and that parcel number one with 320 is, my recommendation to the other board members is that it should be no further uh, development on it. It has to stay the way it is. And that, that is my objection, that they would not be able to come back next month or next okay. year or even two years. If we grant it and we give them conditions, yeah. what, whoever buys it, whoever owns the property, mm -hmm. I can't prohibit them from coming back and asking for relief, okay. but the express language of our decision, if it is granted, would be that there should be no further development okay. on the lot. Okay. But you, anyone as a landowner, they need the relief, if they need <clears throat> relief, they need a place to come and where you come is you start at the Zoning Board of Appeals and ask mm -hmm. for permission. Okay. The board can't say, no, you can't come back, don't talk to us again. But well, if, if we put... Excuse me, I yes. thought the restrictions was at least two years. It is. They could no, no. That. If for, the same, for the same thing, for the okay. same project. But mm -hmm. if somebody bought the house and wanted to do something else, they have the right to come back to the board okay. and ask the question. And if it's within the two years, there's another process. If it's similar or the same, mm -hmm. they have to go to the planning board. The planning board has to approve it. And then this board has to have a similar mm -hmm. hearing to determine it. So yes, there are additional um, procedural mm -hmm. requirements. But if you bought the house and you wanted to do something, you should not be prohibited from coming before the board. You can always ask whether or not you get the relief you're looking for is a different question. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, no, I'm good. I'm glad you came out. That's good. Madam, Hi. you were here the last time. I was here the last time. Did he? I was here the last time. Can I, in, in can opposition. I have your name, please? Robin Sheehan, Thank 50 you. Frost Street. Um, in opposition because they tried to break the lot into three, which was sort of um, grossly, um, you know, they, they were asking for a little bit too much on the variances. So now it just seems like a, like just a minor step back, and the lots certainly are conforming. So, I mean, we really can't stop people from building houses on the conforming lots. And um, so, I mean, I guess it's fine then, because it's con 
Well, well, well you live, listen, you live yeah. in the area, so yeah. I need your input. That's what right, neighbors right. need to get involved so we know what's happening in the neighborhood. I encourage you to come and talk to us. Right. Um, and it, but I just wanted to make sure that the facts that you're dealing with, right. this three lots versus two lots versus conforming, right. make sure we understand what we're talking about. Your concern about the parking is something that maybe this board is going to consider. It's something that I would recommend that if they're thinking, if the board members are thinking of granting it, those are the conditions that they should think about. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to direct her a planning talk a little bit, but that's where we're coming from. Right. Is there anyone else opposed to this petition? Okay. Mr. Director, do you have any uh, input that we should think about? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I think that uh, require site plan review for lot number two and require a minimum of the two par off-street parking spaces. Uh, parcel number one, you should add a condition that there is no further subdivision of parcel number one. I would also request that you condition uh, the requirement of a f minimum of a four lot uh, parking Four spaces points. on lot one and require site plan review. Uh, we want to look at that to make sure that it's, you know, the drainage doesn't impact the adjacent property owners and that, that it, you know, lighting uh, can be screened, the parking lot lights. Um, and that the existing garage be raised before a building permit be issued. And that is, that's your condition. <laughs> but um, I, I would request that um, parcel um, one be conditioned on um, four off-street parking spaces and site plan review for the parking lot. S parcel number two, site plan review and two off-street. No further subdivision of parcel number one. one. Those would be the conditions that I would recommend if you would approve it. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've heard from who's in favor, who's opposed, and we've heard of all some conditions. Motion to grant with conditions, motion to deny. What do you want to do? Move approval. Just subject to lot one, no further subdivision, both lots subject to uh, site review, uh, minimum parking on lot one of four units and on lot two of two units. Raising of the garage and before any garage building permit is Alright. Second. Second, Dan Dupier. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Okay, so that petition is granted with those conditions. Okay. Thank you. Agenda item number one. Uh, Michaela and Stephen Guzzi, 515 Wiedemo Street, Lot R135. Variance request to allow addition to the rear of the existing dwelling. Waiving setback requirements in the S district, lot size 4,976 plus or minus square feet. Good evening. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> These are setbacks to follow oh, here. <laughs> Good evening. Identify yourself Hello. for the record and tell us what you want to do. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Um, my name is Michaela Guzzi. This is my husband, Steve Guzzi. Good evening. Um, and we're here to appeal to you for a variance seeking relief from our existing setback uh, requirements for our S uh, single family district. Um, I had prepared a letter, it was included in the packet. I don't know if you'd like me to read it or if it's already been reviewed. If it was in the package, we must have read it. Um, I don't know if anyone in the audience wanted to. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have a formal presentation. No, it's okay. Stuff. You tell so go ahead. You tell us what you want to do. Uh, well, we bought our home, in, uh, I'll paraphrase, in 2010, our one and only home. Um, and since buying it, we've had two children. They're five and eight. Um, and they're very rambunctious, and <laughs> we're getting cramped in the space we have. Um, so our need for space has increased. Uh, we love our house. We've maintained it well. We've updated it. Um, and really, it's, I think, um, a contribution to the health of our neighborhood. Uh, you know that we've been there for as long as we have and that we've you know kept up our property and, and made these improvements um, So we want to add more space off of the back of our house. So into our own yard uh, The only issue being that our house is old. Uh, it was built in 1924. I should say historic um, 
built in 24, and then our neighbor's home was built the following year, I believe in 1925. So for nearly 100 years, our homes have been in their current configuration about 10 feet apart uh, from our foundation to the property line. Um, and now the setback is 15 feet. So for us to be in conformance to the setback, we would actually have to cut, uh, instead of following our existing foundation, we have to cut five feet in and then go back. Uh, but we're using this space to add another bedroom and to um, elongate our kitchen, which is currently cramped. Uh, so we really wouldn't be able to make use of that space effectively if we were to conform to this at that. Is the proposed addition, as I read this plan, I don't know, it's just eight, really 18.33 by 12? 12 by 18? It, it would come 12 feet out off the back of the house and then it would go 18 feet over. I know, yes. but that's it. That's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so comparatively simple <laughs> to one other matters two before you this edition. Two. Pardon? One level or two. It level. would be two. We'd have so a, a new bedroom above our, our new kitchen, yes. So the kitchen's at the bottom and the bedroom's upstairs. Exactly. Following, the existing following the existing line of that. Mm -hmm. of this, sure. yeah. And we have talked to the neighbors next to us, are actually friends of ours, and their exact quote was, you could build a sky bridge to our house and come for dinner, we don't care. <laughs> so, no, got it. Suffice it to say, we have their, uh, their, their blessing. So, so. The waiver, so the waiver that you need is that side yard. Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah, thanks. It's a concrete pad, currently, the, the entire back, um, where you want to put this? Well, currently we have... Um, it, it yeah, appears we would be digging a new foundation, but the concrete pad doesn't go the entire 12 feet. It's a patio, and it would be dug up as part of making a new foundation. But currently, a vast currently, majority of this area is concrete. is concrete. concrete. Yes. Correct. So we wouldn't. Really You'll be tearing the concrete. You're building a house over existing concrete area. Correct. Well, we we would be You're, digging a full yeah. foundation. Yes, to do that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're not adding any more impervious area. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Is no. what I'm trying to get no. at. Correct. No. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> Thank you for the leaving, okay. sirs. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm not being fresh. Are you certain that 12 feet by 18.33 feet is adequate for what you need? Absolutely, yes. We wouldn't be able to afford putting on much more. <laughs> your engineers and your contractors are satisfied that they can do a 12 by 18 foot. So if we grant you, I don't want you coming yeah. back because you need a foot. <laughs> No. Because it's 18 and a half, because it's... Yeah, that's all. I'm just asking if those not, they're so precise that are you sure well, that that's what it is? It does, it's not I, 14 well, feet. We had the land surveying done. Yes. You know, we incurred the cost for that to ensure that we had what we needed okay. to present to you, so I, I would be confident in their numbers. Okay. We don't have a contractor to build it yet because we didn't want to go that route until we knew that we had the board's permission to okay. Did the proceed. Your floor plan that you have the architectural design actually design something that's an odd size M most times buildings are built it costs the same amount to build 20 feet as it does to build 18 oh, oh, okay, uh -huh. so that's an odd number just like if you build a deck it's you know you build a deck can, in I, even I increments sure because that. if you don't it costs you more because you have to buy a 10 foot yep. and you have to spend the time to cut not a foot off so that's when we see this. That's why he's saying I, I do. I, when I we see this now. odd um, number, so that it's other window. Huh? Yeah. So the reason. So the reason for that is I don't know if there's anything that adequately shows it, but probably this one. Okay. Yeah, the color one. picture of the window. Oh, okay. Please <laughs> So the way that our house is currently, and he. He pointed it out exactly. Is um, this line right here, in between these two small windows? Yes. Is the wall that will be extending? Yes, because on one side is our living room, and on the other is our hallway and our bathroom, and then subsequently our kitchen. So we would not want to go that extra foot because it would only be adding one foot to our living room. It wouldn't, and it would block our window. That's what, what I would do. That's what I'm, uh, I'm thinking of doing. Just give you the waiver. Uh, okay. What we're going at is a lot of times it's based on the plan, or they could just say that they're going to grant you a waiver to allow the the setback of the building to be nine 
feet five and the stairwell to be five point five point six and that's your setback and then if it turns out that eighteen point three the eighteen feet four inches is eighteen feet ten inches mm -hmm. it's not a problem because it's not affecting the setback. Okay. We don't want to see they don't want to see you back here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we see that all the time. Well so our, our, our only issue is on uh, in, in terms of not being in accordance with the setback would be on that foundation line. That's correct. correct. That's what we're so talking about. That's that. The only variance, the only then. thing that you would need is that side yard. Because otherwise we're just going on back the into east, our own. On the east, yeah. Right. So Wiedemo Street, east side, if this north arrow is correct, it's going to be the east side waiver, 9.5 and 5.6 would be the two points. Yep. And then you can build what you want to build over there. Is that... Okay. So let me see if there's any. <laughs> is there anyone here in favor of this petition? It looks like I'm applying that the roof height maintains the same height as the existing Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no anyone here in favor? Anyone here opposed to this petition? Okay. So based on those calculations, do I get a motion to grant the variance on the east side with 9.5 feet variance? So the side yard would be 9.5 feet from the building and 5.6 feet from the stairwell. Motion to grant. Motion to grant Dan Dupier, second. Right. Second John Frank. Any discussion on the motion? All those Do in favor? We just what? need to stipulate that the that if they do extend it, it can't change the other setback on the other side if they did go bigger? No. Yes, we can say that. That the set this that, that they are limited to that range. They're limited to that range on the on the east side. We're not dealing feet. anything with the Yeah. yeah Twelve they're limited to the 12, 12 feet down. depth. 12 feet depth, is that what you're worried No, I'm talking about yeah. the width that, that they don't interfere with the other side. I mean, that it doesn't exceed. That it the, doesn't go into 5.8. Yeah, I mean, if we're just going with the general, you can maintain the one setback, but you don't. You got to maintain so both. So maintain setbacks. both. If you want to do that, put both okay. setbacks, then that gives them what they need. That, that whole range. Okay. Is 6 .8. Is that 6.8 or 5.8? Six point eight. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, if we were to change, um, if we were to reconfigure it to put the door to go off the kitchen onto the other side for any reason, would that affect anything? Well, that's what that's, that's what, what Mr. Parkinson is just saying. From. So if we keep it at 6.8 that you're showing, keep it within that dimension, then put yeah, it where you okay. 12 feet, but where so you're going. So as long as we that's don't, that's you mean exit out this. towards your shed? Yeah. Yeah. What they're saying is, as long as you don't go on the other side of your shed, but you, it appears you don't want to move your shed. No, we don't yeah. have to go that far anyway, so we'd be okay. If you build it on the inside, you wouldn't need no a variance. Issue. There's no variance to that. Okay. It's strictly you're asking for the variance for the 12 feet along the side, side yard. yard. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 So that's Jim's motion. Side yard. Oh, that was, whose oh. motion was it? I thought it was Jim. Jim's it was Dan's Dan. motion to grant. The further discussion was over here. So now, Dan, you want to change your, modify yeah, your modify motion to motion. include that? Okay. So Dan's motion, do we have a second on Dan's modified motion? Second. Second, Jim Corkins. Any further discussion on the motion? None. All those in favor? Two, three, four, five. Okay. So it's granted with those conditions, with those setbacks. 14 days from now, come get your decision. It should be 21 days. No, no. Well, 14 days, I'll write the, I'll sign the decisions at 21 days. So about 31 days, your decision will be done. A decision okay. is recorded within 14 days, and then there's yeah. a 21 day appeal period. After that. Okay. And then but once that's done, then you can pick it up and then come pick up. Proceed with plans. And come pick it up. Yes. And then record it at the registry. Please record you can, it at you the can, registry. You can come to our office, and we'll, uh, we can explain all of that. Thank you. Don't worry. Okay. Mom and Pop, we understand. <laughs> I don't have to explain it to the engineer that was yeah, just prior. Yeah, we were, we were taught back to follow. They had me a little nervous. <laughs> <I'm gonna be laughs> Thank you very much for your Thank time, you. everyone. Okay. Agenda item number four. Farmington Limited Partnership, care of Peter Salino, Esquire. 400 Columbia Street, lot N25-2. Did I miss one? Number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> you will we'll sit down. down. No, it's a, Peter, sit down. It's a Vine Properties LLC. Uh, 284, 288 Broadway Street, Lot G421. 
special permit request pursuant to section 86 428 requesting to reestablish a pre-existing non-conforming commercial use of office space on first floor of mixed use building in the A2 district lot size 3147 plus or minus square feet. I don't know what I for. Good evening for the record. My name is Dan Aguiar of SciTech Engineering. Address is here in the city as well as down at Marshfield. Um, we had this evening on this petition with regards to 284 through 288 Broadway. This plan may look somewhat familiar to you all. Um, they all in, blend in. Back in March, um, we had submitted, submitted a special permit subdivision plan which cut out what we're showing on this parcel. Um, our parcel, parcel two to our south, and then what you see is parcel three to the east. I've labeled them as parcels because they, even, they haven't even been given new assessor's map and lot numbers yet. Um, during that process, um, through that special permit process, we were allowed to subdivide this into three parcels, um, doing the best that we could. We had easements for parking and, and everything else. So we complied with those uh, requirements of the special permit, recorded it, filed the subdivision plan with the subsequent uh, easement documentation on it, filed that subdivision plan in July. That's been recorded at the registry as well. Um, the owner, when he had gone into uh, the building inspector to renovate the first floor of the building that we're here this evening, 284 through 288 at the corner, you'll see, and I think you have this cut sheet in your applications, but I can pass along the colored one to you. It just, it shows what that building is and, and was. The first floor of that unit had previously contained a commercial use. So I don't know exactly what the use was, uh, it was but it's clear that it was a commercial use. The building inspector made the interpretation that the use had ceased for more than a two year period of time um, and would not get a permit to renovate the building. You can keep it there. Um, so, luckily, zoning does have a provision under 86428 where we can come in and ask you by a special permit basically to reinstitute the previous non-conforming commercial use. This is an A2 district. The owners of the building are here this evening. Uh, the site is going to be, uh, that first floor would be renovated for general office space, maybe like a real estate office or something of that nature, not a high retail use. Um, so we could, we could limit it to office space of, of some kind. Um, so luckily again, by special permit, we have that ability to come back and, and clean that up so the building inspector um, can grant a permit to allow the renovation of that first floor of that building. That's all. It's a straightforward application. What about parking? Um, again, going back to the special permit, there's an existing garage on this site. You'll see that um, contained all of the parking for uh, this building. Um, the other parking areas that you see shown here, and that's why I showed it during that decision, the 296 was afforded a number of spaces that you see shown as well as 355 and there are cross easements there to provide their parking for their two uses. This existing building on the corner was relying on the existing garage which is how many four stalls um, as well as on street parking. So the existing garage will provide the parking for the? For the apartments, for the correct. And then whatever small commercial use takes place there, there's ample parking on Broadway and Division Street just as it has been in the past. During the day, I just wanted to note that. What are the hours? That Nine to five. And how many uh, days a week? What's that? How many, how many days, days a week? Uh, Monday through Fridays. You sure, you don't want Saturday? <laughs> no. I mean, I might be there working. Yes. Okay. Name and address, please. My name is David Oliveira. Hello, I David at, Oliveira. Uh, I live at uh, 23 Plymouth Boulevard in Westport. And uh, I own Divine Properties with Matthew. And I'm um, also the owner and broker on record for Divine Real Estate. And that's going to be the office that's going to be there. So it's going to be real estate office? Real estate office, yes. Any other type of office built uh, offices there? Nope. Strictly. Uh, oh, well, we own property as well. There might be some tenants in and out potentially paying. Just the two of you? That's it right now. I own it and he... No, no, I know. But, but in this building, like, how many office you would just fall oh, One. Space. One office. One office. Yeah. 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 Although this building looks large, the majority of it is garage. So I think it's probably only like maybe 30 by 38 in the space. Uh, it's about a thousand square feet, so okay. yeah, so I think that if you do the math, that's probably. So we're not going to have ten brokers, it's just going to be the no, two of you there. It's going to be one broker, I'm not looking to accumulate a lot of agents, honestly. Um, no, that's not. We, we got, buy and sell properties. You're property. doing no. fine. Once it all from south. So then the garage will have enough parking for you two, the two of you. Yeah, stay out of the rain. 
Um, I would, I would, I would suggest yeah. Saturday. So that's what I was saying. Monday through Friday. Yeah. During Saturday. the day, the road opens Saturday. up a lot. Actually, we'll, it's too sad. Yeah. Monday through. We, we, we would request just. You, you don't want some. Even if you're not yeah. taking customers in, yeah. you technically shouldn't be there. So, let's say there was a fire and something happened to you on that Saturday. You don't belong. There. The chairman recommends that you go to Saturday oh, okay. too. Yeah. Okay. That way, you I don't, don't have to be there. But you don't have to come back. No, but I don't want you coming back, and I don't want any issues. I appreciate there. the advice. We can definitely do that. Because um, Dan will still charge you. <laughs> just use no the other. How long has it has it not been used now? I, I we, we couldn't find that information. Out. But but let me say this about because after my independent research got me to they've been it's been assessed. There's been the two oh, it's still up assessed, until two as as no as an office. It's okay. been forever, apartments and office, and I was thinking that when the two years had passed, that there was going to be a removal of that from the assessor's con, right. and there hasn't been. Uh, so I didn't go back. I know that, it, I think the last use there may have been a salon, uh, but I, I don't know the answer to that. But the simple answer is, what, looking through the assessors, prep, preparing for the meeting this evening, I saw that it just continues to be assessed as a commercial space, mm -hmm. split. The, the tax bill was both commercial and right. which is why he was very surprised yeah. to so not get anyway it that's where we are is anyone here in favor of this petition is there anyone here opposed to this petition members of the board any other questions about this carol no okay. Okay. Motion to okay motion to grant the special permit with under uh 86, 86 uh 428 428 with conditions Conditions hours of operation nine, nine to five, five Monday, Monday through Saturday. Saturday. They follow whatever signage. Whatever. Is that except without dealing with signage, they'll do whatever's in the area that they can do. Right. Okay. Okay. So that's Carolyn's motion. Do I have a second? Second, Dan Dupay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Too. Thanks, guys. Okay. No, I'm sorry, Attorney Salino. This was, is Joe. It is not. This is live and in color for you. You tell us to fill a little bit. Farmington Limited Partnership Care of Peter Salino Esquire, 400 Columbia Street, Lot N25-2. So number four is the variance request to waive front and side yard setback requirements in the Central Business District, CBD District, and to expand the assisted living facility by adding two-story, 33-unit facility providing 39 total parking spaces on site. Lot size, 82,713 plus or minus square feet. Previous variance relief granted on December 21st, 2001. I'm just gonna pass up an additional handout, if I may, relative to parking. Kind of late, wouldn't you think? Should have, okay, why wasn't yeah. this ahead of time? So for purposes of the record, members of the board, Attorney Peter Solino, 550 Locust Street, Fall River, for the petitioner with me tonight is C.J. Boyle. His family owns uh, Farming, Farming Tin Limited Partnership, which is the owner of the parcel. The parcel is known as the Landmark. It's located at 400 Columbia Street. The family uh, purchased the property in 1997. At that time, Attorney Ron Lowenstein had represented the family seeking a variance uh, for the use of 88 units uh, waiving use and dimensional requirements. Then there was a subsequent variant uh, decision by this board to allow them to construct seven additional units within the existing facility, and that was in 2002. Would you like to copy this? No, no, I've got oh, yeah. it. I just, because one of the decisions had some limiting language that I wanted to ask you about, but I'm sure you're prepared to talk about it. I am prepared to talk about it. So the first one was 88 units, uh, and the second one was seven additional units. So as we come before you with this proposal tonight, the proposal is 33 additional units. The building, as per the plan, will be joined by a one-story connector to the existing building. The improvements are contemplated to be on the east side of the site, which is the factory of terror site, if you will, from, from a local knowledge perspective. Uh, the proposal is that... It's in that vacant lot along Pearl Street. That's correct. There's a por uh, portion of that lot is paved right now, and the proposal would have the building being built on a portion of the pavement. The proposal has 16 underground parking spaces and then eight additional parking spaces. And the... Um, so I think as I looked at the bylaw, 
Um, the first issue I see is the proposed uh, building has front yard and side yard setback issues. So are we doing it? We're doing the variance first, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the first variance I'm requesting is front yard and side yard setback uh, because obviously we don't meet either of those as per the plan. The but that's it's going to be a new building. A new building, yes. All right. So let's get back to the December 20th, 2001 variance. 2001. Okay. Yes. Which, where the board granted to construct seven additional units to the existing assisted living facility, um, but the condition was that there shall be no exterior expansion to the building. Right. Okay. So that, now, is, that was a condition. That's why I th think that was the condition of the additional seven, but right. you, you don't read that as being no no um, expansion to the exterior of the building as being a prohibition that this is as big as the building gets and you can't go any further. I do not. I think that was at that time based on the petition presented. Okay. Go ahead, keep going. Um, okay. So I think my first issue uh, that we need relief is front yard and side yard. Then I look to use. Uh, the the 1997 variance sets the use as a maximum of 88 units. So I would submit to you that you could argue that 88 is permitted, uh, meaning it's conforming use up to 88, maybe plus the 7. So the reason I pled it in the alternative is because I think I may not have an approved use here. Uh, I think you could see it that maybe there is an approved use under the existing variances or maybe. So it becomes a approved use, a conforming use versus a non-conforming use. Correct. Go ahead. So hence the, the alternative pleading. So if we're sticking with the variance, then I would submit to you that A, the site is definitely on the sheet. It is built on a hill, uh, and the further development is constrained because of the current building on the existing site. Um, I don't think it's detrimental to the neighborhood. In fact, it's a use that's been made for 20 plus years by my client. The proposed use is memory care. So as I understand it, memory care is an up and coming area in elder care, uh, specifically to handle Alzheimer's patients. The patients are not expected to drive. In fact, they would be unable to drive. And there seems to be, and CJ can speak to this if the board wants, but the analysis seems to suggest that we are an underserved community for this type of service, that the baby boomer population is reaching their 70s, and that this type of service is going to be, it's not a slight, it's just a fact, uh, and that uh, this is going to be uh, necessary. So I don't think this uh, derogates from the intent of the bylaw. Obviously, the bylaw is trying to group things that are of like use, and I think this keeps that consistent. So that is my pitch on the variance as to use and setback. Can you address the parking? I yes. Mean, that is a concern. Certainly. So as I look at the bylaw, it's 86-441, and the bylaw calls for one space per four beds and an additional loading space. So the proposal currently is 33 additional to the 90 that are there. So by my math, uh, we're required to give you 32 spaces, and the plan shows 39 spaces. So I think we exceed the parking requirement, and that's why I didn't ask for it any kind of relief related to parking, uh, either by special permit or variance. How many employees will you have? And will there even be enough employee parking? Yeah, so the employees are very limited. That's why I passed out that grid. And the executive director is sitting right here to speak to it. But effectively, as I understand it, during the day on a two-floor assisted living or memory care facility, you have to have two nurses and a shift manager. So you're actually only adding three employees during the peak hours. The dining staff, the maintenance staff, and the director of maintenance is here as well. It's going to maintain the same volume that it is now. Can I ask a question? Yes. Go so the, you're going to add 33 more beds and no more staff? No, you're going to add. Uh, so the staff is shown on the grid that I passed out. You're yeah. going to add five. If you could explain. I used to be good in math, but I I I, I don't understand. I, okay. I I'm actually having um, this looks like it was written by an engineer. It's pretty. <laughs> CJ is a smart guy. Um, all right, so ASL stands for assisted, assisted living. living. Yes. And MC is memory care. Okay. Okay. So during the time ranges shown, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. or 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., which is a shift indicator, yes. 
um, there would be a total of five employees. Now, we're talking about the entire facility, all... No, no, we're talking about the additional. Just the addition. Just the addition. Correct. Oh, I'd love to know about the existing facility and okay. parking on that. All right. I didn't... I have a different table for that. Oh, wait. wait you started on this table. Yeah. So get us, get us through. <laughs> Assisted memory care because you're, you're causing my memory to get taxed. Okay. Uh, so in the top part of the grid during the day, uh, assisted living is one, memory care is four. And then in the evening, three to 11 or two to 10, again, depending on when your shift is, it's one plus three equals four. And then d overnight shift is um, three. One assisted living, two memory care. So l let me ask, so tell me why I'm seeing assisted living one when this is we're just dealing with the memory care unit. Because 24 are gonna be memory care and 33 are gonna be assisted oh, so living. So it's no. not all 33 no. memory, it's not gonna be a, I'm sorry, nine assisted living. So not all 33 are going to not be Not all 33 care. is, the, so the memory care memory unit care, right? yes. is yeah. not going to be 100% memory care. It's going to have a combination use. Right, and then I think I have that. So do, 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 do the residents of the assisted uh, living, do they have vehicles? I have a different table for that. May I pass out a different table? Go ahead. So we put this one aside for now? Uh, we'll use them Okay, so this is a parking survey that was conducted by Phil Souza, who's the maintenance director, who's up here in the back. Um, the dates are listed. This was in contemplation of the variance or and or special permit petition. So this is the current facility you have now? Yes. Okay. And so you'll see the residents are labeled there to answer your question. And I believe that was Thanksgiving weekend, right? Yeah. All right, so let's talk about it. Monday the 25th of November, on the first, first shift, 7 a.m. to 3, we had 12 residents parking and 17 other people. Mm -hmm. The 17 other people, is that including staff, <laughs> visitors? Yes. Okay. So now, then on the 2 p. on the second, the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift, we have an additional resident showing up, and we have a decrease in three other people, so somebody went home. Correct. And then from 11 p.m. to 7, one of the residents disappeared, went back to work, and the other one, there's nobody else there, so there's only three people parking. Correct. The next day, it's interesting that you say that. I'm going to find out what day of Thanksgiving was. But uh, the next day, we had the 12 the residents. Right? Thursday. Yeah. Uh, and then we had 19, so we had other people coming in that day. And then on the second shift, we had 11, and then other 13. So the residents were leaving. Yeah, that's Thanksgiving. Well, so it's good we had, the, during that 3 p.m., we had people showing up. The third, we had 12, so you know, there wasn't much activity with the residents, but the others, always that third shift, 11 p.m. to 7, it seems there's really not, there's only three cars there. Um, then on Thanksgiving Day, we had the same 12 residents, but we had lots of visitors. We had 24 in the first shift. Right. Then we went back down to the 12, and one of the residents I want to know where that resident goes. Um, and then on the okay. third... They go to the casino. They go. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just laughing. Three, three to 11, the guy disappears. He or she goes. Uh, so <laughs> That's probably factual. Yeah. It is. Third. I'm sure it's very factual. Different it's presented as evidence. I know you. <laughs> okay. So that's the, that's the parking. That's, so if we graph it out and see what it is, that's what's happening there. Right. And does that present a problem at any time, that volume? Um, I don't believe so, but if you want to speak to that, or if, if I may ask you If the executive director would like to speak. So this is Lisa Papula. She's the executive director of the facility. If you could just speak to that, please. Yeah, if it comes with the holiday and things like that, or if we have an event, we do have side parking as well on an open boulevard side. So staff normally will park over there when we need to. 
on um, the Millican Boulevard side. Okay. Yes, yeah, uh, behind Dunkin' Donuts. We yeah, have. no, I got. I'm just trying to think where. Yeah, okay. It's shown on the planet Millican Associates. Associates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says 20 reserved spaces. Is that for you? Um, you don't have it in the back. Yeah, yeah it's about back. 20. No, that you're not looking at that side. You're looking at the other side. Which side are you looking at? Behind the, yeah. behind I'm the where it says Millican Associates. No. There's 15 visitors and there's 20. It should be Millican Boulevard. Up. Well, you're pointing north. There's John. a loading dock behind here where, where the gas station is behind the yeah. gas station on Millican. Yeah. Not on second. You're looking at the other side. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at the whatever well, Millican Associates. Yeah. That's Gross. someone else's parking. Yeah. Yes. Good. That's <clears throat> Hubs. Millican Associates, I think it's the Hubs. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Fido Burger. You're Fido. just talking about the your back pavement area, your quote unquote loading area that goes to the, where your backyard, the gazebo yeah, is? Yeah, yes. Oh, too bad your plan doesn't show that. How do you access it? How many spots there? Peter, how do you access it? How do you, how do you access it? There's an easement in between Duncan, Huds, and the corner store. Oh, right here. That, that's an easement. How many spaces do you have there? Back there, there's going to be, I want to say, um, 14, 15. If you wanted to you know, pop back there, yeah, 14, 15 spaces, no problem. You've done it before. Is that employee parking? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is. Too bad your plan doesn't show it. <laughs> Did I say that already? He said that. You know, I'm all about plans, you know. As far as the parking, you know, uh, we actually uh, so many times I have to pull people out because they come, they try to use an hour. You know, Chico across the street, many of his visitors, they, they'll come and pull in, so I have to go out there and make sure they get out. So we have plenty, as far as parking. Well, I'm glad I parked on the street today. No problem. <laughs> yeah, there is parking on the street, so. Okay. Gotta keep going, Peter. That's what I have for you on the variance. And if we need to talk about the special permit request, then we can. So can I ask you this? Sure. The quote unquote yeah. underground parking, that, that's not subterranean. I mean that's is it going to be is it gonna be the buildings built over it? Yes, yes the building is built okay, over so it. Okay, so it's really not it's and the it's content. below building parking, but not subterranean. It is not subterranean. And okay. So is that because of the slope and the shape of the lot? So yes. the lot's going to be on piers. That'll be horizontal, but underneath will be the parking in that. That is Basically, correct. it's covered parking. Covered, yes, yeah. and the roof line will line up per the, you know, the architecture that we have so far. will line up with the current roof line. It'll be a little bit less, actually. It looks like a foot less. So how many total parking spaces will you have between the old building and what you are proposing? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine is it? Yes. Without these Without unmapped, those unofficial, unofficial, unmapped. And then you have an additional how many unofficial spots? We'll call it fourteen for the record. And that doesn't count these. Does that count the seven and the six over on this side? Yeah. I have to look at it now. Yeah, I think yes. you're saying when you add them all up. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That was the way I added it. And so with the addition you are proposing, how many additional or how many people will be using parking spots? I have your obviously parking survey for the current facility, but. Then you go back to the other grid. So yeah, you go back to the other grid. Can you walk us through it? I mean. If yeah, it's assisted living, they might have a car. I mean, they may, and it's tough to forecast that. At least 24 of the units, we, the people are not fit to drive, so they will not have a car. Um, but the you know the visitor parking right. flows. So the only thing I can report to you is the employee parking, and that's the purpose of that graph. And the additional employees were th three. Five, four, three. Five, four, three. Five, four, three. Then you have to count for visitors and if there's any residents that have a Yeah, no, no. But that's, I'm just saying, I want to get to the, mm -hmm. the fixed group that will be there every day. So how many is it going to be? So we've got the existing 
and then with the new 33 units, there's only going to be an addition, if I understood Peter correctly, three additional staff members? Overnight. Five, so during the day it's during five. Peak, peak Highest, time is five. 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 Yeah. So if you added that 7 a.m. to 7, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. peak. Yes. To your numbers, if you added five to all of those, plus what would you, may I ask, sorry. Well, <laughs> go ahead, you're the director of planning. I'm, I'm fishing to get it because I think you took my plan. Uh oh. Okay. But that's okay. Oh, what I was getting ready to ask? Go ahead, ask, ask, go ahead. What is in your estimation as the manager of the facility and the owner of the facility or the maintenance person um, of the, you have currently 90 units? Yes. Uh, and the, is that all assisted living now? Yes. So of the 90 units, what is the estimated, what's your current percentage of people that own cars? So that's that's what that's what that's what that's where I was going when I was looking at these numbers. That yeah, yeah, the residents don't have lots of cars. Right, and you're you're at peak. You're both 87 out of 90. Okay. And at that point, we were full. Meaning the point of the graph. Yeah, they yeah. had full occupancy so yeah, at the Thanksgiving. Are employees directed to park in the back or not? Our whole kitchen staff parks in the back. Yeah. Just your kitchen staff? Yeah. Yes. When, when you say, when we say the back, in, in the pot that's not the unofficial, the, the unofficial, unofficial spot. non shown yeah. parking spaces that might be shown in the future on a yes. plan. Yes. They will be in the site plan. So the upper box doesn't, in the 543 doesn't include kitchen staff. No, but right below that, right so where it says below is yep. our current staff. Right, so it's eight, six, five. And that's two Saturday, Sunday. And then below that is the wellness current staff. CJ, uh, CJ can you just speak to wellness? What does that mean? Uh, that's... Nursing staff caregivers. Yeah. Okay. What's a five Could, four? What's eight. in front? When I was on Columbia Street looking at it today, you had signs. I didn't want. I didn't want to get thrown out. Uh, but. It looks like the parking. <laughs> I, I was going to park and walk across the street. The, but there are signs that this, I don't know what it says, whether it's handicapped that along Columbia Street, there's parking, but there are signs in each parking space. That's what that says, re resident parking? Yeah. Okay. I was going to walk around and look, and I says, no, I would, I'll just ask can I. You would have met Phil in the afternoon instead of I, eight I think we've met before. I've been yeah, at the facility many yeah, times. We've been, we've, yeah, we've yeah. Yeah. So you're losing two handicapped parking places, but I don't see them relocated anywhere else. Are you, are we doing that? Or we would have to, Mr. Yeah. 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 So they'd they'd, yeah they would have to recreate or find two additional right. handicapped. Right, the two underneath the yeah. building are being removed on the summer. So those would stay. Yeah. Okay. These two. Yes. Yeah. Which two were those, Peter? Those would be <laughs> northeast, uh, southeast corner of the building. Yeah, right. But I want, I want John and Jim to see where they are. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you identified them? That's where. Those are where those are Yeah. Okay. But they're going to be replaced. Yep. Yeah. 
just to make sure you have so choose to approve it, then obviously site plan review will be required. I would specifically uh, express that in any decision that you do. What, site plan? Of course. Yeah. Um, well, is there and the reason else why that maybe we're missing in terms of doing this analysis or looking at it with the structure of the building, the two floors, the 33 well, three units? It's a special permit, so it gives the board law. Uh, Oh, well, we're not on a special yeah. permit yet. We're just oh. doing the variance part. Okay. Well, a variance or a special permit gives you wide latitude. They're asking for something. Therefore, if you wanted to exceed the parking requirement, you are well within your right to, to do ask that, for it. Sure. To ask for it. Um, and parking, you know, appears to be of issue. That's I mentioned to the Mr. Salino before. Uh, when I, we got this, that I think he needed additional parking information. That's why I know he's provided it tonight. Um, and if you look at the, when you look at the Google Map aerial, which is sometimes is always telling, the parking lot on Google Earth is full, which means, which um, when you see that, then you go out and you look and you, and you go see uh, that parking uh, can be of issue. Um, you know, they exceed the minimum parking requirement, but sometimes the use, our parking table isn't, you know, reflective yeah, no. of it. But if um, we but if we add 14 and say a minimum of 53, yeah, or I, I, I wouldn't. I think they should show what how much. Parking. Oh no no no! I think that's what, I'm going that way, but I'm saying just in terms yeah, because, of numbers, because because when they come to, when they come to site plan and I'm going to go well, you really can't count those three spaces that you've designed back here because it requires a hovercraft. Because I actually get those site plans, um, so um, I uh, I would refrain from saying 14 because that might be stacking them in there like cordwood, and that's not really how we can approve it. All right, so let me ask the question. If we want more detailed plans, if we want them to come back with a more detailed plan showing the parking before we act on it, that is up to the board. No, no, I'm, a, I'm that, asking. That I'm not is, asking you. That's I'm asking. my main concern. I'm, you know, I'm, I don't I'm have looking at the board the members and I'm asking the question: If we're making this parking. leap of faith that this 14, before we act on it, do you want a revised plan showing that to take care of the parking issue? Because we've spent a few minutes talking about it. Would and, and the the site review? That yeah. would handle that? Yeah. They, they would, but if the representation for us to make the determination about the variance that we've got this two-story building, 33 units, and we want parking, if we're going to be dealing with parking issues, we should probably have all the facts before we make this leap of faith and say, yeah, there might be 14, maybe not, because at least for myself, and I can't speak for Carolyn, but I know that we're concerned about the number of parking spaces available because it, it just seems a burden on the existing facility. Yeah. But if you can use that back pot and we go 14 places that are designated and are functional, then maybe that relieves some of the concern yeah. that at least I have. If we make a motion to say a minimum of 10 spots in the back and it doesn't meet it at site plan, does it have to come back? Yeah. I would think, I would think that they would yes. want to get it approved with what can be done, and I would prefer that than to have to uh, haggle you at the site plan review. My, my recommendation is to have it done with perfection here rather than back and forth, John. But I'm only one voice, and there are four other members. But Carol, yeah, what's your? Well, I mean, I, no, I, I mean, you were doing, you were doing the math, you were doing the, you, know, uh, like you had said, done the calculations, and you already identified it. I don't have concerns with the special permit part, but the variance I do based on the parking, and I'm not so clear with these plans. Do you want to come back with that next meeting with a more detailed plan dealing with the parking? Yes, please. I think yeah. that. Would. Do you have access to both the easements, so it's like a circle? Because it shows. Oh, the easement is not a circle. Oh, there's a sewer easement there. You're talking about. 
you have an access easement between the gas station and the restaurant. Just so I'm clear with the engineer, so we want more detail on parking. Do we want different calculations? Are we looking? What else can I ask for? Since we're coming back, we're going to come back with a lot of stuff. I want to. Yeah, I want to. We want the plan. We want the parking to be shown. Okay. Yeah. The, they, they need to show how they how they can park in this the rear area, and I would think you would want to label them employee only spaces. Um, so why don't you have the engineer talk to the director of planning so, and the so maintenance person on how they actually do and it and how they actually do it so what's presented for the board the next meeting is we have details that the planning director can either walk us through or we know that there's a high level of confidence we know what we're talking about and I know Christian Farland and all the other people there um, and they always always recommend email me before you submit a final one okay I think that makes when sense. Was the, yeah. When was the filing done? Do we need, we need your written yes. permission to extend um, so we're not running? Do you want me to write it right now? Or you want me to no, no, I just, I'm just, I want to make sure yeah. days because I'm doing the calculation. Right now. Yeah, this was a late filing. So um, why, don't, why don't we get it in writing that okay. you agree that we're continuing both, why don't we continue both matters to the next meeting? Okay. Now we've got seven, seven on the next. Um, is this an amended? Is this amendment no, for the this isn't. No. no amendment. This is just a no, more just detailed, a revised, more because, detailed because plan. Because it was advertised as the 30, providing 39 parking spaces. David, so yes, sir. can we have them show the handicapped parking spots on the revised plan? Yeah. Sure. I mean, right. being, being a care facility, you would think. No, but what I, that's, that's why I'm recommending right. that their engineer you can talk to the director of planning okay. to get oh, the okay. the, the, all the detail that we it's want on the plan okay. so we know what we're dealing with. Versus just guessing how many with moving to, yeah, there's going to be two in place. Uh, let's see it on the plan and have a detailed plan for the next meeting. Yes. Uh, what was the question? Yeah, so. If it's amended. He has to pay. I, if it's amended, I need the, the language tomorrow. He can do that. If it's not amended, then it's just before the next meeting. Well, they're just adding more, adding more, not taking away. Not taking I don't think they can. Add, you don't have to re-advertise. I don't think we have. We're not reducing. We're not so reducing. We got the minimum, better. and it's going. Right. If anything, it's going to be greater right. than. So I think we're fine. Okay. Right. So then the deadline doesn't matter. Okay. No. Does that work? Carrying both. Both. We're going to do both. No, we're not going to act on one without the other. No granting permission to, to extend to, to next March nineteenth, twenty twenty. Second by Carolyn. All those in favor? Okay. So that takes care of that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Six and seven, we took care of uh, where we're going. Both new offices. Any citizen input? Anyone sign up back there? No. Approval of the minutes of the November 21st, 2019, December 19, 2019. In January 16, 2020 minutes? Just November and November. Just November. It's all that I saw. That's why I was smiling about maybe a January I didn't see. Wave, wave, wave the reading and adoption of the minutes of the November and December meetings. Jim Clark is the second. John Frank. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, any other business to bring before the board? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Dan Dupier. Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Fall River, February 20th, 2020, is hereby closed. Thank you.